Just south of the Amalfi Coast stands a dramatic reminder of the rich history of this part of Italy. While many travel all the way to Greece to see Greek ruins, just south of here you can see some marvelous Greek temples. Remember, 500 years before Christ, southern Italy was called Magna Grecia, Greater Greece. And the wonders of that western frontier of Greece can be well appreciated at Paestum. The town was founded by Greeks in the 6th century BC. The Romans conquered it in the 3rd century BC. But the final conquerors of Paestum, malaria-carrying mosquitoes, kept the site wonderfully deserted for nearly a thousand years. The striking setting includes the remains of three impressive temples. The lonely temple of Ceres. The almost delicate temple of Hera was dedicated to the Greek goddess of marriage in 550 BC. And the highlight, the Temple of Neptune is simply breathtaking. Constructed in 450 BC, it's a textbook example of the Doric style. As well-preserved and beautiful as the Parthenon in Athens, this huge structure is a tribute to Greek engineering and aesthetics. The ancient Greek city of Syracuse is long gone. But wandering through its scant remains in the city's archaeological park, you pick up hints of its former power. At its peak around the 5th century BC, Greek Syracuse had roughly the same population it has today, over 100,000 people. It was the dominant military and economic power in this corner of the Greek world. With a commanding harbor view, the ancient Greek theater originally sat 15,000. While it dates from 500 BC, it's still in use today. The terrace above the theater functioned as a grand lobby covered by a wooden roof and decorated with fine statues. The waterfall is part of an aqueduct, a man-made underground river carved out of the rock, allowing fresh water to flow 15 miles from a mountain spring into the city. The stone that built ancient Syracuse was quarried on site by enslaved prisoners of war. Today, that quarry's overgrown with lush vegetation, and while it's called the Garden of Paradise, it's filled with tragic memories. It's easy to forget when marveling at these ancient theaters and temples that slave labor quarried and carried the stones that made it all possible. Back then, Many soldiers willingly fought to the death because they knew that life as a prisoner of war or slave was even worse. The quarry was like a huge underground concentration camp, a hellish place where slaves lived out their miserable lives cutting stone. Gazing at the one tower of stone still standing, imagine that this was a pillar helping support the roof of a giant man-made cavern. That roof collapsed with an earthquake in 1693. A surviving quarry cavern is nicknamed the Ear of Dionysus. Venturing in, you can still see the chisel lines showing how it was cut over the generations from the top down. A two-hour drive takes us to the city of Agrigento and the most impressive ancient site in Sicily. Its ridge is lined with Greek temples. Little survives of ancient Agrigento beyond a few grand temples. In the 5th century BC, Agrigento was the third largest city in the Greek world, after Athens and Syracuse, another Sicilian city. Its protective wall, carved right out of the hillside, was seven miles long, fortifying what was a huge city. To think that 2,500 years ago, two of the top cities in the Greek world were here in Sicily is another reminder of the importance of this island in ancient times. Back then, when tough times hit, Greek society basically told its landless sons, go west, and west was Sicily. This was their land of opportunity. They came here and created a new greater Greece. It was Magna Grecia. Imagine the grand impression this ridge, lined with temples, must have made on sailors from all corners of the Mediterranean as they approached by sea. 
It was a religious ensemble, about a dozen temples for a dozen gods, each serving a different role. Here at Agrigento, you were fully covered. The Temple of Concordia is the best preserved. Like all Greek temples, it followed the same basic layout. The temple always faced east. The design is called peripteral, which means ringed by columns. It sits on a raised base with steps. An inner room, the cella, was reserved for priests and gods. Regular worshipers gathered outside. As there's no marble in Sicily, temples were built of limestone. Columns each consist of four drums, aligned by interior pegs, capped by a capital. Once the drums were stacked, the grooves were carved. That's called fluting. And then a layer of plaster was added to make it look like marble. Finally, the temple's decorative features were painted with bold colors. The massive Temple of Zeus once stood here. The size of a football field, it was the largest Doric temple in the ancient world. As it was used as a quarry for its pre-cut stones, very little survives today. These stones supported a massive sacrificial altar, always at the east end of the temple. It was said they could sacrifice a hundred oxen at once, as thousands gathered. And with the meaty feast that followed, there was always a good turnout. Wandering through the evocative remains of this huge temple, you can only marvel at how wealthy and developed this mysterious Greek world must have been 2,500 years ago. But of course, the ancient Greeks were muscled out by the ancient Romans.